Wolf. Yeah, nah, this is the only way to fly. Right, today we're going to discuss, is a 750 watt power supply any good for an RTX 4090 or even an 850 watt Wolf? Yes, you can use both actually. There's definitely a bit more to it than that. And I definitely do not recommend a 750 watt, but it can be done. I've done it, so I'm going to tell you my results with it. Now the RTX 4090 I got, I got the Zeus Tough one here. So it's basically nearly like a Strix, like a baby Strix, you could say. You can check out my last video with this graphics card. I'll show you how I installed it, etc. And yeah, man, 4090, woof, that thing flies. And this one is a nice premium one. And the thing is, I'm a bit torn now. Do I want this OC one or the Strix? Because this is cheaper, but so see, I still get the 133 power limit, so 133%. Ah, oh, it's a hard decision there. Anyway, beggars probably can't be choosers. I'll probably have to get what I can get. Anyway, this one's sent out to me. But 750 watt, I changed it for an 850 watt. I needn't have bothered in this sort of system here. Now, this is in my current rig, which is 12900K, a Zeus Prime motherboard, you know, CL14 RAM, overclocked to 5.3 gigahertz, that 12900K, I can go up to 5.5, but 5.3 is really good. This thing here is an older system. Oi! Oh, I sort of knew that was gonna happen, but anyway. This is an older system. The reason why I put the 4090 in here is I wanted to see, can an older system, you know, push it to the max? Now this has an Intel 10850K, overclocked to five gigahertz, CL15 RAM, I think that is, and it is 3200 megahertz. Now it did have a 750 watt power supply and I tested both the 750 watt and the 850 watt and at 4K, no problems with either of them. So the short answer is you can use both. Now, is it recommended you use 750 watt power supply? No, but hold on there, hold on to your horses. Even though this is a 750 watt power supply and even though I don't recommend it, if you want to, you know, lower down the power limit, I don't know who has a 750 watt power supply and gets a 4090, I don't know, but I've just done it, so I just thought I'd share it. What you can do is actually limit the wattage to about 70% on the RTX 4090, and guess what? It uses a third less power and you only lose about 5% performance. So in that scenario, you could definitely use a 750 watt power supply. Now, the only thing I've done different with the 4090 in my 12900K build was, I only put three power cables into the adapter, whereas the other one I put four separate ones. This one I only put three, okay? So that limits it sort of to a 450 watt card, not the limit of its power. That's what it becomes. You can't use the 33% sort of power limit upgrade. That's what happens when you add the fourth one, right? You can go up to 133% power limit. So that should sort of limit the wattage there. And the thing is both with a 750 watt and an 850 watt, even though at 4K, I definitely recommend 1000 watts. You can do it with these, especially if you lower down the power limit. The only thing is you're running at the wrong side of the power efficiency. So you'll be really straining these, you know what I mean? So if you've got a game that does 500 watts and you're you know, doing 150 watts on your CPU, which is the sort like a typical gaming load you won't you really get to 500 watts like seriously 1440p you know 300 watts i was seeing like the only like stress tests i could get up to you know 500 watts i, I hardly ever saw 500 watts but just say you were using 500 watts and 150 watts on a cpu these can do it they won't be very efficient you'll be using quite a lot of the power they'll be struggling to do it compared to say a thousand watts where it will just be sort of cruising, right? So I noticed no instability with the 750 watt and the only thing I changed is I only had three of these connected and like the performance was exactly the same. Now with this, the 10850 versus the 12900, this isn't as fast as the 12900, but the 12900 is overclocked to 5.3, this is only five gigahertz, and the RAM is faster in my 12900 as well. And this was within, you know, single digit sort of percentage of that 12900, okay? So do not upgrade the CPU if you're on a 9900K onwards, don't worry about it because you're only going to get sort of single figure sort of percentage boost there, especially if you've got an overclock system. So that's why I actually done it. I actually wanted to see, you know, 12900K versus 10th gen. Is there much difference? And really there's not that much difference with this. 
at the lower resolutions, yeah, there's a little bit of difference, but the thing is, you're not gonna notice it, like seriously. And especially if you're gonna use this for 4K. The big problem with this 4090 is, I mean, this is a really good 4090, but the thing is, it's either gonna blow you away or you're just gonna go meh, because the thing is, a lot of stuff is CPU bottlenecked, and unless you're gonna be doing 4K, and even sometimes that CPU bottleneck there. So, you know, there were some benchmarks I was doing on games. It's like, wow, this is a lot faster. And some it's like, seriously, especially at lower resolutions, like 1440p. It was like when I was playing Call of Duty and PUBG, like the frames were so similar to a 3090 at 1440p, should I say. But the thing is, I could just turn on more settings with this and get the same sort of frame rates. And the actual fact in PUBG, I wasn't getting any FPS gain. It was just I could turn more settings on. Again, at 1440p, different at 4K. But yeah, anyway, stay tuned for my video. I'm going to say why this is, you know, you're going to get this and you're going to think this is the best thing ever if you've got the right game. And another game, you're going to be, uh, really, it wasn't worth that sort of upgrade. Maybe I should get a 6900 or a you know, 3080 Ti or something like that, really cheap. So yeah, anyway, stay tuned for that. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.